Alrighty, in this video we're going to start working on the, uh, I guess, equipping portion, so to speak, of the inventory. So when we click on our carrier here, I want to simply attach it to the spine O2 bone, so that way we are, well, wearing it. So we got to spawn it and then attach it. So here I went ahead and imported the mesh and just simply set the color to be the med pack, so that way it's obviously visible. So to begin, we need to start actually creating our item. So we can head over here to our blueprints. And I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of the dirt blueprint because it, it has no use. That was just an example. So we want to make a new, uh, well, item here. So let's go ahead and grab one of these. So we actually should probably make an item, or let me rephrase that, a new class for this. Because one, we want to, again, override the use function. And ultimately, we don't really want them to stack. So my idea is I want to have a simple check to limit the stack. So that way we can't, you know, stack. Or, I don't know, we'll just see. So we're just going to make it for the time being so we can equip it and wear it. So we're going to grab our item. We're going to create a C++ class derived from it. And let's call it plate carrier. All right, let's go ahead and create it. All righty, once it's been created, we are pretty much good to go. We can use our food here as kind of a reference. So we want to override our use function and yeah, go from there. So let's go ahead and go to our header, create a uh, public section. I'm going to do virtual void and it was use and override it. So it takes in our character and a boolean. Again, we want to forward declare this and generate our implementation. Next, let's go ahead and include our character. So we're going to include inventory shop tutorial or your class or your project name and then the character. So from here, we want to do a check. So if our character is valid, we want to equip the well, the carrier. So our this item itself, we want to attach it to the character. So what we're going to do is we want to get the mesh. So character, get mesh. And here we want to, well, let me rephrase that. That's what we're going to use to attach. So we're going to go ahead and do attach to component, character, get mesh. And then if we look through the remaining parameters, if it's going to even show me, Yep, so we have the attachment transform rules. So F attachment transform rules. We want to snap to target. Uh, we'll do not including scale. I don't remember if my scaling was messed up or not in it. I don't think it was. And then the name of the socket. So F name. And here I want to go ahead and double check it. So let's head over to our third person mesh or mannequin mesh. Do the skeleton. Uh, in Spino 2, let's add a preview asset and grab the plate carrier. All right, so it is rotated off. So we want to, I might have to end up pivoting this around inside of Blender, uh, depending on if that's even correct. That seems odd that it was rotated that way. Oops. But uh, that's what we want to attach it to. So it was spine underscore O2. All right, and that should realistically take, well, take care of it. So that's our use. However, this kind of has a problem because if we head over to our character here, let's find the use, let's see, was it use remove? Yeah, we create a class default object and then we use it. Well, that's a slight problem, mostly because, well, while we are using it, so to speak, we don't have this actor in the world. So this, it's just not going to work. We don't have anything to really attach. So what we need to do is we need to spawn this actor and then attach it. So the same thing kind of goes to do that. We actually close these out. We have the item subclass here. And yeah, so we want to change it up. So what I want to do is, let's see, I didn't think this through fully. I kind of want to do a check to see if this item is, well, 
wearable or equipable. So to do that, we're going to go to our A item class and let's just create a U property Boolean. So bool B is equipable, assuming that's even spelled right. And go ahead and go to the constructor here and we're going to set that equal to false by default. And then we want to go to our plate carrier here. We want to create a constructor. And we want to do B is equipable equals true. So then finally in the item.cpp, we want to do one more check and just see if this is, well, equipable. However, uh, we have the, I keep going to the wrong place. We are currently going through and, well, yeah, we're using TSEP class stuff, so scratch that. We actually are going to be fine there. So let's go ahead and create a function that returns a Boolean. So bool is equipable, and we just want it to return b is equipable, and that's it. So we're just going to call this. So we're going to create the item default object, and this is where we only want to do it on the server. So let's see, we go through, we by default handle it that way. Let's see, use remove item. I feel like I'm in the wrong function here. Don't we have a function just called use? Yes, use item. So if that's valid, if it is not the shopkeeper, we call use remove item. And if we class in the item subclass, if we're not, let's see, if we're not the server, We are kind of doing the same thing. Okay. So we'll handle this from the server at first. So if it's not the shopkeeper, we call use remove item. Ready? So if use item, that should obviously be true in our case. So we create the default object. Let's do a check. So if item CDO is equipable. We want to do something, otherwise we want to just use the item like normal. So if the item is equipable, we want to spawn it and attach it. So let's go ahead and do a get world spawn actor of the type A item, passing in the subclass, which is item subclass, and then the spawn parameters, so F actor spawn parameters. On params, on params dot owner equals this, and here let's just pass in those spawn parameters, and I want to store this actor. So let's do if uh, let's see we're going to return a item item. If all this is valid, then what we want to do is go through and uh, let's see come on, what's my brain thinking we want to go through and want to attach it sorry my brain's kind of off right now it's 2 40 in the morning so item attached to component get mesh f attachment transform rules we want to snap not including scale then f name it was a uh, what was it spine underscore 02 i think and we should be good to go. So again, I only want to do this on the server, so I only want to spawn it and attach it on the server. So if it's equipable, we want to do check. So if has authority, so it only runs on the server. And hopefully everything else should work all the same. So let's uh, give it a try and just kind of see roughly what happens. So let's close everything down, recompile and relaunch. Alrighty, so we have a compiler on line 249, which is where we define item. So we just have to go through and rename it. So let's do spawned item as the name instead, then go through and recompile and relaunch. Okay, once we're back inside the editor, let's find our plate carrier, create the blueprint class, throw it inside of blueprints, and call it bp underscore plate carrier. All right, let's give it the mesh. So that's our example plate carrier right there. And we should have a Boolean 
somewhere is equipable, which we want to set to true. That's already good by default. Then the item class, which is again, play carrier. The item image we don't have, so I'm just going to put this normal map for it. Compile and save. Okay, let's drag and drop this into the world. Uh, I should probably actually check and make sure this has some form of collision. Oh great, how can I even see it in this? There, simple collision. Okay, that's interesting how it generated it. All right, let's go ahead and pick it up. Here we have it, we click it. And we are having some issues with collision. So let's open up that blueprint there. It's, it kind of means it works because we have collision screwing with us. So let's click on our mesh, go down to collision. Block all dynamic is set, so let's set it to custom. And for pawn and physics body, set it to ignore. Compile save. So now we should be able to walk actually through it. It's just going to block our camera. So let's actually uncheck it from camera as well. So camera, ignore. Hopefully that does what I'm thinking it does. Yes, it does. Okay. So we pick it up and we equip it. So there it is. We just have it off uh, rotated wrong. So I don't know why it's actually oriented that way. It's correct, and ah, yes, I never did copy rotation, so that might be an indication. Now let me try that real quick and just see. Right, so that is off, so I just got to rotate by 90 degrees. And apply the rotation, attach it, then we're good to go. All right, let me re-export this out real quick and re-import all right so rotate it over and i guess technically we could on it back in the world and rotate it back up we could just rotate it when we actually go to attach it but that's not all that big of a deal so we pick it up we can equip it and we now have our plate carrier with nipples poking through on our guy so that Actually, that still looks a little bit off. Is it? Oh, no, that's about right. So, yeah, that's attached how we need it. We now have our plate carrier set up. He's wearing it. We have an equipable item on our chest. So, basically, from here, this is where you would want to do a couple different things. Uh, ultimately, this should kind of take care of itself when it comes down to dealing with things like projectiles, if you have it set up, you know, to make use of it. And what I mean by that is whenever a projectile hits something, this is something you would want to be penetratable or hit or miss, I guess. It, again, it depends on your system. But let's say it's, you know, just level three body armor. And then let's say we hit it with 855. So it's most likely going to penetrate through. There's a chance it'll stop it. So you would have when your projectile hits or your line trace hits the plate carrier, you would have it do a check and just maybe make it random or go based off of the durability of the plate carrier or the plates inside of it, again, depending on your system. And if it penetrates half the speed or half the damage, something like that, again, it's really up to you. So that's just an example here. This is where you would go through and you would add on like, you know, a backpack, for example. And I've I don't know if I showed how to do that in another door, but when I press I, for example, I could do a check, and if I have a backpack, I would expand this, so I would just add more slots in, and that sort of thing. So the functionality is really just up to your imagination there. But again, that's how you would go through and equip it. So to sum up what we've just done, let's uh, start kind of from the beginning. So we pick up the item, obviously. So you should be familiar with how that works. Pick it up. Here we have the item. When we click it, this function here called use item gets called. So that takes in the subclass, the shopkeeper, and a boolean to determine if it's a shop item. So we do a check. So obviously if the class is valid, then we want to proceed. If not, we don't want to do anything. And here we want to do a check. So if we are on the server, 
we do a check. So if the shopkeeper is invalid, meaning it's part of our inventory, we want to call use remove item. Otherwise, we handle it on the shopkeeper. So here we want to call, because we're the server right now, we call use remove item, which we simply go through, obviously do things like checking and seeing if we already have the item, or actually if the item exists and all that fun stuff. If so, we use the item. Or sorry, if we have it set to use item, we go ahead and, well, we make an attempt to use it. So for example, money, we don't use it in this fashion. So this is false. We don't even bother with it. So there we can go through, we can create the class default object to check our Boolean. And if that class is set to be equivocal, then we want to go through, spawn it, and attach it to wherever we need to attach it to. So ultimately, if we wanted to, we could have a function inside of spawned item that handles the attachment for us. But ultimately, it would just consist of this line here. So I'm just putting it here, for example. So that's one thing you could do there. The other than that, that's not really doing a whole lot of, lot different. I want to go ahead and do a quick check and see if this works on the client. So let's give that a shot real quick. Client, I'll pick up the carrier. Click it. All right. Had a little bit of a lag stutter there. I'm not sure what that caused, but it is replicated because of how our system works and working. That was the benefit of, uh, yeah, going, I guess, kind of the route we did. So it's very easy, as you can see, to add new items and really expand on the current system. Anyhow, that's going to be all for this video, and I believe all for this series, unless something kind of random gets requested, but a lot of the stuff that you would do on top of this is really just up to your game, how you want to implement stuff, and whether or not you're incorporating a, an existing system with it so yeah there comes that's pretty much the basics when it comes down to your replicated inventory a functional shop system again that's replicated uh basic form of currency this can all be handled you know completely different fashion if you wish uh, and that kind of stuff i've already talked about how you can sell items back to the trader everything is set up to be very portable and simple to use so that's going to be all for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to nearly all of my videos. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord. That's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.